What's up folks, it's Zola and today we are going to be having a look at the shape layers. Now whilst these might not seem entirely exciting on the kind of surface of it, I think you'll find once you get inside you'll find that see these are pretty much one of the coolest things in After Effects. However they are a bit fiddly if you don't know what you're doing so um, I'm here to dispel any of those issues we should have and hopefully you will learn some stuff and find that shape layers. Yeah, I'll pretty indispensable and one of the best things that have been introduced I think they came in in CS3 or CS4 uh, they've been around a while but uh, yeah let's let's just get into it so I'm gonna make a new composition here just call it shapes obviously we have nothing in here right now now I think you'll remember that when we went to these tools here we had the layer selected oh I apologize for that. Uh, when we went up here and we had the layer selected, um, we would make uh, a mask. And same with the pen tool. If I come off here and click on here, we would create a mask. However, if you have no layer in here selected, I think you'll find that when you actually come to um, create anything, either one of these shapes or if you're drawing with the pen tool, you'll create what's known as a shape layer. Now, a shape layer is... I mean, if you've used Illustrator before, this will make like a lot of sense. And there's various ways in which you can. Um, I'm just going to open Illustrator here in the background while I'm working. Um, there's various ways in which you can make and use shape layers. But the long story is um, that they're obviously shapes. And as you can see here, if I zoom in, um, they're they're quite tricky to figure out because if I grab one of these corners you'll see what I'm essentially doing is uh, scaling them much like a shape but you can see here this the width of this here on the side is a lot thinner to here so I'm actually squashing this right now which is not what I want the axis point is not in the middle which is kind of annoying uh, so first thing first to reset an axis point to the middle of the layer is control alt and home which does this and then if you press con uh, control home uh, you can center your layer in a composition, which is kind of useful. So let's have a look at what uh, we've done. Obviously, swap c control for command on the Mac. If you're using this on a Mac, you'll see we've uh, we've got a shape layer. And the first thing I'm going to draw your attention to with it selected is up here. We have fill and stroke. And again, if you've used Illustrator before, this might look familiar. So at the moment, we've got a red line through fill, which means that there is no fill. And we can confirm that here because there's nothing in the middle. And we have a stroke of 31 pixels in the blue color. So uh, let's have a look. So obviously the first thing we can mess around with are stroke sizes, which uh, I can get just by dragging this up and down. Pretty simple stuff. Um, now, if I come to fill over here and click on here, I can give uh, the, the layer a, a fill of whatever color. Let's just make this um, orangey yellow, I guess. And if you click on the blue word, fill or stroke, you get this little menu here, which is your fill option. So at the moment, you, what we had before was the non. Uh, right now we have a solid color. We can have a gradient in here. We can also have a radial gradient. And what happens when, and this is the blending mode. So if I select screen, you know, it would have the screen blending mode. Obviously we're not blending over anything at the moment. This is the opacity of your fill. And uh, now we have this little do that here in the middle and you can pull the gradient from one side to the other to um, to kind of fill it with a gradient. So we've done that. And as you can see here, we're adding stuff down in the bottom corner all the time. Um, now, another way you can create a shape layer is with a actually first thing I'm going to do is show you that the stroke is has exactly the same menu You can have no stroke filled stroke gradient stroke which is kind of interesting so if I do this and hit OK and move this around you might be able to tell if I uh, click this kind of hides the edges of your masks and stuff um, so if I move this around if you keep an eye on the stroke uh, it's a bit more visible if I do it up there but uh, I'm, I'm just going to change this back to uh, obviously here if I come in here I can make different um, gradients in terms of like the uh, the framing so let's just say we want a kind of maybe a blue 
by edging towards the purple, like somewhere here. I've gone full purple there. Uh, just bring that down. So we have blue to purple to black, which you can see here. If I deselect the layer, we've, we've got it there. So that's all pretty simple. And the other way you can make a shape is by getting your pen tool and drawing a freehand shape. So I'm going to draw uh, some weird shape. And you can see it has exactly the same options if we come into here, the contents, got the shape. If we come up here, we can still change the path and all that nonsense. Um, so let's kill that. If you select here and uh, go up here, you can switch between masks. So if you have a shape selected, I can now add a mask to this. And the mask will behave in exactly the way you expect it to. So now we're masking the shape layer and we've got a mask and all the options that that brings with it. I'm going to delete the mask though. Uh, another way you can do uh, create a shape layer is if I come into Illustrate here and I'm just going to hit New and I'm, let me just scale this window down so you guys can see it. Um, you'd think I'd be prepared for this but I'm clearly not. Uh, let's just make a shape that would be kind of difficult to make in uh, after effects. So I'm going to make these uh, four, five, I guess there's five cubes and I'm going to join them all together to create this weird shape. And I'm going to increase the scale of the stroke just so you guys can see it. So I've made this weird like square shape. And if I hit Control C to copy it and come into layer, notice what happens if I have, um, I'm going to make a new solid. If I have a solid and I hit paste now, we're going to create that shape, but as a mask, which is kind of useful. So um, that's good to know. But uh, there's another thing you can do in uh, After Effects, which is if I come to Layer, make a new shape layer. And at the moment, if I had this other one, this shape layer is empty. So it's a shape layer, but there's nothing in there. So if we look at the contents and we add um, a path, and we come down to the path, select the path, and we paste, we're going to get the path in here um, and this is going to allow us to uh, do at the moment we have no stroke or fill so we're going to add um, a stroke and come into here and now we have a stroke and we have the stroke of all these options now why would I go to the trouble of making something in Illustrator to bring into here so that I have the shape options. Well, that's the next thing I'm going to show you. Um, this lesson might go into like, again, two or three parts because shape layers are quite complex. Um, but let me show you by starting with a circle. So I'm going to deselect all my layers, come up to uh, ellipse and make a circle. I still have my horrible um, thing here applied. So I'm going to get rid of the, I always do that. I'm going to get rid of the fill here and make my stroke a more palatable size and I'm going to just change this to a standard stroke of a colour so we can see it. So there's my circle uh, as a shape layer and what can we do with this? So if we look down in here we have our path. So a path is basically essentially the what we're drawing here. It's the path in which your stroke and your fill will kind of adhere to. Um, at the moment we have it as um, what's called a shape path, I think. So what, what, what I mean by that is I can't physically do anything other than stretch this. However, if I right click on the path, I can convert it to a bezier. At this point, if I select G to bring up my pen tool, um, I can move the points around as you would with, uh, you know, if I'd drawn this with, um, a pen tool so um, that's kind of useful so if you're ever wondering why you can't like grab these things it's because you have to convert uh, anything you've basically anything you make with these tools you're going to have to convert to a bezier path by going to the path and doing convert to bezier path and then when you hit g when you select the layer so, see i'm still i've still got this kind of thing going on but if i hit g bring up my pen tool um uh, being weird. Oh, did I convert it? I didn't convert it. That's probably why. Uh, there we go. So if we hit G, we can move these points around. 
um, as they were Bezier path. So now if I right click, um, I can't convert to Bezier path, which means it's been converted. And sometimes if your paths are doing something funny, that's probably what I would recommend you do. And so here we have our stroke and we have no gradient fill, but what I can do is come to add, choose another stroke, put this um, less. So these will be in order. So this will be the top stroke and the bottom stroke is down here. And if I select this bottom one and make it wider and come to the top one, and I believe, I believe I can fly. Now I believe um, they should be they should be stacking one on top of the other, but they're not quite doing that right now, and I'm not quite sure why. Oh, there we go. Okay, so uh, here we have the top stroke, and as you can see here, we've stacked one stroke on top of the other, and this is all being driven by the same path meaning that if I select this and move one of these, you know, everything adheres to that and that's kind of cool. And obviously, if I, again, if I want to add like gradient fill, I can do that. I can add it. I can move this around. And you can see here we're already creating um, a kind of complex thing, which probably would be impossible to do with just um, masking and other kinds of, you know, standard layers. So I think that's where I'm going to end it for this introduction to share players. Go in and have fun and I will see you for the next one where we can start looking at some of these options and doing cool stuff like this. Like this. <laughs> see that was fun right? So I'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching guys. Like, comment and subscribe etc and I'll see you soon.